I'm really curious about how your perception of this Bitcoin organism, as you said it before, specifically the base layer blockchain, how did your understanding of what this actually is useful for change over the years? Um, well, I, I certainly started off just having less informed opinions, I guess, than I do now. Um, but yeah, I always from the start kind of took a, a really like critical approach and just looked at it and said, how can this break? Right. How can this stop working? Um, and I think that's a great question, uh, to understand what the capabilities are by looking at the weaknesses and by knowing where it stops working you gain confidence in all the places where it does work. Um, and yeah, so I think from that perspective, um, I sort of, um, I guess I see it now uh, as, I guess to me it's obvious, but maybe it's probably not obvious to everyone. Uh, I, I see it as this, this thing where we have one block every 10 minutes and there's a limited amount of space with every block. And this is just inherent to the system. Like we can't really, I mean, there, there's some ways to get around it and some of these ways I've, I've come up with, but generally speaking, that is really the, the limit. So in order to get more out of Bitcoin, you have to somehow take those inherent limitations and you have to do something to work with them despite this limit and despite this limitation, do more than you were doing today. Um, and that's really kind of what a lot of my research has been kind of, uh, you know, focused on to not just say like, oh, uh, we're just going to decrease the security, right? We're going to make Bitcoin less secure. Uh, and then we get scaling because the decrease in security will lead to an increase in uh, other things we can do. Like, for instance, if you increase the block size, uh, it'll be harder for people to run full nodes, uh, which is a decrease in security in, in a sense. Uh, but we'll have more more transactions like that's. That's the kind of trade-off that's frankly quite terrible. And, you know, the ironic thing is, uh, you see a lot of the alt these altcoins uh, making these trade-offs. And, you know, it's always this, this kind of claim that, oh, it's still safe when it's, uh, 32 megabytes or something, right? It, it's, it's when you get to 64 megabytes. That's when it's not safe. You know, like it's something like that, right? Where they always have this, this kind of excuse where they're saying like, oh, no, no, this is still okay, but that, that's no longer okay. Whereas for me, I look at Bitcoin and I'm, I'm kind of more like, you know, there's something Luke Jr. says as well. It's like, well, maybe we should have a block size decrease, right? Well, maybe we should have less transactions. Is it, is it secure enough now? I don't know. Um, so it, it's, you know, it's more of that like mentality of, um, looking at it and not just assuming, oh, oh, these, this is okay, but always like having the back of your head, like, well, maybe it isn't, right? Maybe it won't go well. And I think one of the it, it kind of easy solutions was to make digital payments and digital transactions. I mean, arguably, we figured that out almost perfectly and scalably with Xiaomi and eCash back, what, in the 1980s somewhere, right? Mm. I think the beauty of Bitcoin is not about making these transactions, it's about verifying them. Right? And all of a sudden, this is a very different type of framework of how much can we actually expect other market participants to uh, expend computing power and bandwidth and storage and so on uh, to verify the money that they have received. Yeah, that's a good point. I, I think there, there are two two parts of, about this because, yes, uh, Xiaomi and eCash was not verifiable. Uh, like the server could mint more coins without you knowing that the server was minting more coins. Uh, but there's also the aspect of uh, censorship resistance, right? Where the Xiaomi and eCash server can Okay, they don't know who you are, so it's maybe unlikely that they do this, but they could start censoring everybody and just say, like, look, if you want me to send this, uh, if you want to send over this token to somebody, you have to identify yourself. So there was a censorship resistance problem and there's a verifiability problem, I guess. Um, so it's a bit of both because, like, technically, I, I don't think it would have been a stretch to say that somebody could have done something like Bitcoin, but just on a central server, uh, years ago. I, I yeah, I mean, it's a bit of a stretch in the sense that probably it would have been too much bandwidth back then or just very low transactions per second. Uh, so maybe from that perspective, it wouldn't be very uh, doable. Um, but yeah, I think, I think those, those are the two core aspects, the censorship resistance, um, and what you mentioned where you could actually verify everything that happened.